Gates. Hi. Executive Director of Richburg Gross. That's me. And tell me you moved here from New York. You know, I, uh, that's where I lived. That was the, my latest uh, like journey. But I am from North Carolina and I moved here, uh, lived here for a few years, moved to Minneapolis for a couple years, moved back, moved to New York, and now back for good, probably. Good. You know, oh, I'm yeah. still young. You're home. Yes. We hope you are. Yes. <laughs> Lynchburg Gross needs you. Well, I love Lynchburg. So why Lynchburg Gross? Um, so when I moved back from New York, I was working for Virginia Cooperative, Cooperative Extension, and it was a great program that I was working for, but it was not for me. Um, and I knew about Lynchburg Grows, and I knew that they were hiring, and I was just thinking, oh, I can just be a farmer. I'm sure someone else in the organization is moving up into, into the position, and um, that was not the case. And they are like, all right, here you go. Here's this is the yours. organization. This is yours. <laughs> yeah. Take it and run with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and I love it, and it's beautiful, and it's nice to, you know, do kind of everything, you know, farming, directing. It's fun. Mm -hmm. So an overview about Lynchburg Grows. I've got later in here different things that you do, but mm -hmm. what's, 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 the, what's the biggest focus or goal? So our mission is two-pronged. So... Um, Half of our mission is to work with the community to provide access to healthy food. And then the other half is to provide purposeful employment to individuals with disabilities. So we want to grow food and then we want to send it out into the community. We want um, anyone that gets hungry to have access to it. Mm -hmm. And then all that food that we're growing is um, harvested, planted, processed by our farmers with disabilities. That's awesome. Yeah. So the facility itself is seven acres? Ish. Yeah. Ish. And it's... is there food grown other places? Nope. So we grow in, um, we have nine greenhouses and we mm -hmm. grow in the greenhouses. Mm -hmm. um, we aren't growing outside. There used to be community gardens way back in the day that Lynchburg Grows was involved in all throughout the city. But, um, you know, that, that's just a lot. It's mm -hmm. a lot for a small organization mm -hmm. to do. So those are gone now. Um, and we're just growing at LG. So, so you say they're gone, but they're not really gone. I mean, I see them throughout the city. Yeah, they're, they are not, um, part of Lynchburg they're not part Gross. of Lynchburg Grows. There are other people doing community gardens. I know the veggie lot and, um, on Cabell Street, what mm -hmm. is that hill called? Dim Diamond Hill? Diamond Hill. Yep. Um, the veggie spots there. And I know Parks and Rec is maybe mm -hmm. doing some community gardens. I know there was one, I ran into one down on Polk Street, I believe, and it was a neighborhood community garden. Oh yeah, that one's really cute. Mm -hmm. It's um, narrow and long. Mm -hmm. I don't know who runs that one, but they have a very cute sign. Well, it's. I think it's different people in the neighborhood okay. was my understanding cool. from selling the house because it was right next door to the house I sold. Oh, so nice. I had no idea what that was there for and so I learned yeah. from that which was awesome yeah so how many staff members do you have oh my gosh uh 15 ish at this point I think mm -hmm. so that I seems know. to be the magic number with United Way 15 employees oh, really? so you all have 15 staff members so give us a little brief description on what some of those people do and what their focus is um, so we have an assistant farm manager who helps me with just running the, the operations of the farm. Mm -hmm. Where are we going to grow? When are we going to harvest it? Mm -hmm. Who's it going to? How much do we need? Um, and then we have a farm coach. We actually have a full-time farm coach and a part-time. And those farm coaches work with our farmers with disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, they help them set goals, help them with their daily task, um, that sort of thing. And we have a marketing director um, and a development director. We have a CSA manager who manages mm -hmm. all 200 shares of our CSA and make mm -hmm. sure that everyone is well fed and um, getting all the veggies they need. And then we have um, a Fresh RX coordinator. That's our prescription produce program. Um, and she, you know, makes sure that there's classes and people signed up. Um, and then. I think that's everyone. I'm sure we're getting someone. We have a bookkeeper. <laughs> so, um, are all of these people though? As as I looked over these people and I reviewed their their bios, um, 
<clears throat> most of these people seem to not be natives. So how does that, how do, how do they get involved? What, and what do you feel makes them get involved? They're not natives. How do they find out about your program? Um, you know, I think a lot of people have been in Lynchburg for a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, after 15 years, you kind of feel like you're from here. At least that's my experience. I know talking to someone that's from here, maybe that that's not fair, but, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, and I think it's a, it's a really unique organization and I think there's a big draw. Um, the farming part of it is really, I think, mm -hmm. brings a lot of people in. Mm -hmm. So tell me about staff, a couple of the staff members, Chris Matheson, mm -hmm. I know his mother very well, and I know a lot about Chris, and Meryl, Meryl Hackman, mm -hmm. tell me about them. Um, so they are two of our farmers um, with disabilities, and I mean, they're, they're just like all of our other staff, they mm -hmm. come in, they have, you know, tasks assigned to them every day. Um, Chris Matheson is great with helping CSA members get signed in. He is mm -hmm. our um, unofficial official greeter. Mm -hmm. He's very chatty and makes people feel very welcome. Um, and then Mariel is just, you know, she comes in, she knows what she's supposed to do that day, she does it, um, and she is our, um, currently she's on, our only woman farmer with disabilities, so she is you know, the princess of, of the whole the whole clan so that's awesome though. <laughs> she's great yeah that's awesome yeah i know that back when the training center as people would refer to the um training center um my sister and her sister-in-law and her mother-in-law they worked with the training center and in the 70s when they worked with them um my sister was i thought it was funny because when she wasn't working on the weekend she would bring someone home with her so I spent my holidays with these people and and grew up learning to be very accepting and understanding, which has been huge for me in my life in general. So I think working with these people and giving them an opportunity is such an incredible thing. So how did that really come about? So that's um, how Lynchburg Grows got started initially. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a, a man named Paul Lamb who was living mm -hmm. in a group home and he was doing some farming or, you know, gardening beside the group home. And there was a miscommunication somehow with the city and his, um, garden plot got plowed over. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was a story about that in the paper and some people came together saying, this shouldn't happen. Like, mm -hmm. let's, let's make sure that this doesn't happen again. And that's how Lynchburg Rose started. Um, just to create a space for people to garden if they wanted to. And it's such an incredible thing because being a native and also having started volunteer work at the Lynchburg Animal Shelter, um, our shelter was actually at that time nothing but a red barn. And I'm, I'm sure you know where the one was mm -hmm. after the Red Barn and before the one we have now. So as a child, when I started my volunteer work, when I would be waiting to be picked up on the weekends, I would wander over to the greenhouses oh, yeah. and I would walk around. And it's such an incredible use because those greenhouses were just there and it just run down and not a lot going on. And of course, it continue to go that way as is typical with family businesses when people get older and people don't take the businesses over. So it's such an incredible fit to put that together with what you all do. Who was the person that originally had that idea? Who spearheaded that? Um, several different people. Um, Scott Lohman, who mm -hmm. um, is now in Danville, I think. Um, Michael Van Ness, who was the um, first director, mm -hmm. um, and Daryl Cunningham. Um, the, I think it was the three of them. I might be missing some other people, but mm -hmm. um, from you know my limited knowledge. Your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, who I think kind of spearheaded the whole the whole idea. Well, it was incredible, and I say kudos to them. So a little bit about the board of directors. Who's on your board of directors? Um, so we have. 15 people. Um, we have Kim Payne, um, Linda Jones is our president, Carl Schilling is our vice president, um, Susanna Davies is our secretary, and we have Kay Van Allen, um, Patty Fox, Aaron McWayne, another realtor, um, 
I love her. She's, she's great. Awesome. Yeah. She's so fun. And she's so encouraging. Yes. Yeah. Always positive. Yes. Yes. Um, let's see. Who else is on? Uh, Jimmy Foster, Rob Foster. Um, yeah. A, a really active, supportive board. And what role do those people... What, what's their duties? What's their responsibility? What, what, what do they actually do? Um, yeah. So a lot of helping you know, the board and myself and our staff just shaping the direction of the organization. You know, where do we want to go? What are our larger goals and how are we going to get there? Mm -hmm. Um, So helping with that, obviously, you know, raising money, you know, giving whatever talents they have. Um, You know, when Stuart was on the board, she gave a lot of um, her talents with um, videography and Mm -hmm. website design. And Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, offering up talents. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I've been on a lot of boards and it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. (laughs) So we really appreciate the the time and effort that our board members put in. And I think the person that has the most difficult position with the board is you. It kind of seems like all the eyes are on you. I know that's the way that it works. Yeah. um, yeah. When I was on the Lynchburg Humane Board, um, McKenna Yarborough was mm-hmm. our executive director, and I love her, and she did an awesome job. But sometimes I would be in a board meeting, and I um, would feel badly for her. So, you know, because board people that are that are board members tend to have very strong personalities. Mm-hmm. So, it's it's difficult to um, to juggle all that. It is, you know, it's like having fifteen bosses. Yes, you know? <laughs> and, and so, who wants that? Right. I don't right. want any bosses. You so, know, I, you know. Do, 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 do any person, does any person want a boss? I don't think so. No. I think we all want to live mm-hmm. independently and have right. no one bother us. And that's, At least that's what I want. I oh, my Lord, you need to be a realtor. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. You need to be a realtor then. Yeah, it was. I was telling a friend of mine this morning, I told her, I said, you know, I just don't feel like going into work. And she said, well, just look in the mirror and tell yourself to take the day off. I was like, it's not that easy. <laughs> it's really not that easy. Speaking of which, how many days a week are you there? Um... Five to six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, um, obviously it's a farm and you can't just like wave goodbye on Friday Mm -hmm. at five and tell the plants to take care of themselves. So Mm -hmm. we have someone that comes in on the weekend. He's our weekend guy, feeds the chickens, waters the plants, does a new type of harvesting. Um, But if he's not there, I'll step in or another staff member and, you know, take over for him. That's awesome. Yeah. So I have to ask you a question because I'm going through this now with a project that I'm starting. Who, who gets your soil right? You know, um, all of us, it's, we have um, Jennifer, who's our CSA manager. She makes a lot of compost, and so we mm-hmm. use that. Um, because we're in, we have raised beds, mm-hmm. each bed is different. The soil yes. is different in each bed. You know, we have mm-hmm. one bed that's, like, perfect, and I wish that mm-hmm. we could, like, plant everything in that bed. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we have a another bed that I was trying to hoe the other day, and I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, concrete. You know, like, I was just hoeing it, and by the end of the day, my arms, I was like, I'm going to have, like, huge biceps. Um, so, you know, with that bed, we had to make sure that we laid some leaves and then other compost, and mm-hmm. it's kind of, you know, Obviously, soil is not a guessing game, but it, it no, does it does feel um, sometimes where it's like, oh, this bed's great. And then the next day you're like, how is it so bad? Yes. Um, so, yeah, it's myself and the assistant farm manager really making sure that beds have the proper nutrients. And, you know, I loved my grandparents had a tobacco farm and a dairy farm. So, you know, the the casual time was the vegetable garden. Mm-hmm. That was playtime. <laughs> you, know, you were lucky when you, you were able to finish picking bugs off of tobacco leaves. And then, you know, the, like I said, the, the, the playtime was the vegetable garden. Mm-hmm. So I started with that really young in life. And it's amazing to me because... I cannot grow rosemary. I'm the only really? person on the face of the earth that could not get rosemary to grow. I think I God think just doesn't want me to have rosemary I for mean, some reason. Yeah, I, I I believe you because I feel like I have put so many like half dying rosemary bushes in the ground, and then like in three years they're like huge. Yeah, I never have that luck. So. Do you do you like care for them too much? 
I probably do. Yeah. I don't, they don't like their feet soaking wet. Yeah. And I think I'll probably drown the, the roots, yeah. maybe. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I might. I think uh, they have like an avoidant ta- attachment style. They mm-hmm. just want you to leave them alone. And Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's all about, I really think it's all about the right sunlight and not too much water. Mm. But I just can't imagine planting something and not tending to what I plant. Yeah. So I think I, I think I drown them. I think if, do you put them in a place that's like kind of protected, like against the yes. house or? Okay. Mm-hmm. Still mm-hmm. doesn't work. Well, you might need to move on. Mm-hmm. Well, I was thinking, <laughs> I might, that's why I was asking you who took care of the soil. Yeah. I, I had an um, alternative um, motive to that question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I might have to go pick their brain. So the Veggie Society, which I love, the most amazing thing in the world. Tell, tell us about that. Yeah, so um, this was Stuart's brainchild, mm-hmm. and um, we're, we're so thankful that she thought of this. Um, it's basically like an evergreen giving. Um, so we have four different levels and you can choose which level fits for your financial situation, um, or budget and you give, um, you know, a recurring donation. So it can be every year, it can be every month, um, whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. And it's great. We're really trying to build that up. Um, people that join the veggie society get special incentives like discounts, um, early access to our CSA, which fills up pretty quickly, um, early access to event tickets when we have events, um, yeah. So and it's mm-hmm. great, and it obviously it helps us, you know, mm-hmm. knowing that we have this um, regular stream of income is really important for a nonprofit. So. Yes. <laughs> well, I have to tell you that during COVID, I would um, pick up my vegetables every week. It was the most wonderful thing in the world because you just drive through in your car. Yeah. And it was awesome. And what's crazy was I love to cook so because I got something different every week and then I would find myself googling these recipes it was awesome yeah and it was great that that continued through COVID but tell us about the different levels I, you know I was a little disappointed to realize that I'm only a carrot so um, <laughs> I might have to pick up the pace on that I, I don't like being a, a carrot I think I'd rather be something like a watermelon I, you know there's space for you in the watermelon I know uh, there level, is so. I know there is um, we, we can talk about that later. We can get you signed up before I leave. <laughs> oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, my birthday's this Sunday. Oh, okay. And so if you go on my personal Facebook page, mm-hmm. then my um, request for my nonprofit is Lynchburg Grows. Oh, okay. And so I'm, I'm, I'm edging in towards that $1,000 for you all. Well, thank you. And then I do make an investment every year. So, well, thank um, you. We, we appreciate yeah, but that. But I'm not a watermelon guy. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so the watermelon is six thousand plus a year. Yes, and then you've got um, tomatoes. Tomatoes, which you know they're good too. Eighteen hundred to five mm-hmm. nine eight eight. I, I've got to throw this out here because this is what we want people to I do. I love it. We, yes, yeah. please go for you it. Know, I, I'm all about selling yep. something, and I'm, <laughs> I'm selling this hard today. I mean, I'm helping you out. And I'm just a carrot from four hundred and twenty dollars to seventeen eighty eight. It makes me feel badly. It you does. know what? All vegetables are lovely and wonderful and important. Mm-hmm. And so, if you're a pea or a watermelon, it's still a huge, huge um, help. Oh to my goodness! Us. I hadn't even seen the pea. There's a pea, yeah. Yeah. So, what do we do to raise these people from peas to carrots and carrots to tomatoes and tomatoes to watermelons? I you mean, know, what, what's the plan for that? You know, if if it fits into someone's budget mm-hmm. um, for them to move up to the next level, um, we definitely encourage that. But mm-hmm. also recognizing that, you know, $5 a month for some people is more than, you know, they would give just if they were giving to us once a year at our, you know, annual appeal, which they might give $20, but, you know, $5 a month, that, that really adds up. And so, so we appreciate $5 a month, $1 a month. It does all add up. Yeah. And I just realized that actually with the two things I do, I'm not a carrot. I am a tomato. Okay. So I'm so much happier. <laughs> I, 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 I have saved myself. Good, good, good. So are you doing the, the program still where people pick up their vegetables? Yeah. So um, that's called the CSA. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also call it the veggie box because CSA was a little confusing. Mm-hmm. Um veggie box doesn't really clear it up either we still have to Mm -hmm. explain it the exact same way um but it's basically an investment in the farm so you would pay x amount of dollars um and then your return on that investment is a box of produce each week Mm -hmm. um and each week is the end of march through the end of november so we have a pretty long growing season 
um, a little bit longer because of the greenhouses and you know stuff's protected and we can get started a little bit earlier. Um, but we have 200 shares available every year. And so um, you can do a half share, which you pick up every other week, or you can do a full share, which is every week. Um, and you get six items, and it's great because you get to choose them, unlike mm -hmm. other CSAs um, where you just go and they hand you a box and they're mm -hmm. like, well, this is what you get. Um, but we really want to make sure that people are getting the things that they want. The great thing about that is, though, is that I found myself always choosing something that I will admit I did not know what it was. Yeah. So I would choose something so that I was forced to learn a new recipe and how to cook something. I love that. Yeah. It should be like and, part of um, the adventure. I think club. we we have someone in the room that we need to make a um, carrot as well because <laughs> um, he is a wonderful chef. Oh, okay. Um, Hunger Action Coalition, because we're we're post twenty minutes, we're rolling here, oh and I want to talk about this. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. So the Hunger Action Coalition is um, kind of a statewide initiative. It came out of um, Governor Northam's uh, roadmap to end hunger. So there's ten um, different goals to end hunger. The last one being to create these regional coalitions that um, bring people together who are working on, um, you know, food insecurity issues. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it seems like people always are working in silos. So to bring mm -hmm. everyone together to make sure that we're not replicating, you know, everyone's not doing a CSA or, mm -hmm. you know, and also figuring out where the gaps are um, and recognizing what we need and where we could get some help from the state. And mm -hmm. then as the backbone organization, which is Lynchburg Grows, we meet with the state quarterly and just talk about what we're doing, where we could, you know, get some help, that sort of awesome. thing. Yeah. And you have a farm store. We have a farm store um, during the CSA season, which is March through November. It's open on um, Thursdays, and then every other month it's open on Wednesday and Thursday. And you mentioned the Fresh RX. Fresh RX. Which I think is important. It's very important. And what does that accomplish? Um, and we only have a couple minutes, so I'll, to, I'll try to be very, very fast. So it's a prescription produce program. So we work with um, healthcare providers who recognize that there are some patients that could benefit from a diet change. Mm -hmm. They write them a prescription. They bring that prescription to us, and we provide a four-week class where they get some help with, um, you know, learning about veggies, how to cook them, why they're important, that sort of thing, and then just giving them um, the information they need to make the choices that are going to, you know, hopefully benefit their families. Awesome. So they're healthier, which is great. Yes. That's what we all need. And people can take tours, and they can go to the website and find out everything they need to know about tours. Uh -huh. Now, I have to tell you one, one last thing I want to talk about was I did attend a wedding there. Is that commonplace, or is that... Not really. No. no um, it should be. You know, it, it's... It's a beautiful property. It is a little, uh, it's a lot of work to have events mm -hmm. there. Um, insurances, making, mm -hmm. it's a lot of property to cut the grass. We're in charge mm -hmm. of that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's not something we do. It is available, but it's not something that we're really pushing. Well, that's awesome. I get it. There's so many wedding venues, so I yes. wouldn't do that. You all have so much to do that I don't think you need to do weddings. But, you know, if somebody wants to be a watermelon, maybe they can have a wedding you know, there, maybe. you know, or I'm a sure double we, watermelon. We could, we could arrange something. We could arrange something, <laughs> at least for every double watermelon. Exactly. If you're yes. a double watermelon, we got you. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Shelly Blades, thank you so much. Thank you. I encourage everybody to go to the website, and I hope you all start those greenhouse dinners again. Yes, so do I. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. You too.